In the year 1871, on a calm and sunny day in the Atlantic Ocean near the Azores, the captain of the brigantine Dias Gracia saw a strange sight. Another brigantine, which was a common two-masted sailing ship of the period, was approaching the Dias Gracia in a very erratic fashion with only half its sails up. Upon reaching the mystery ship, which the crew identified as the Mary Celeste, they found the ship completely abandoned. With one lifeboat missing but no signs of a struggle, and the last logbook entry from 10 days before didn't mention any problems. The ship's cargo was intact with plenty of food and water on board, along with all of the crew's possessions. All that was missing was that lifeboat and the crew, who were never seen or heard from again. The Mary Celeste became the most famous ghost ship of all time, with all sorts of stories and films that pondered the crew's fate, always adding fanciful details like, you know, the meals were half eaten, there was still a fire burning in the stove, and when the author Arthur Conan Doyle, who famous for creating Sherlock Holmes, wrote a story, he included all of his fanciful touches and he changed the name to the Maria Celeste, uh, to which many uh, it's come down to this day. And yet the truth of the Mary Celeste, a ship abandoned mid-ocean by its crew for no apparent reason, remains one of the greatest maritime mysteries of all time. And more importantly for our purposes, the story of the Mary Celeste is a gold mine of inspiration for a homebrew D&D campaign. Hey gang, your pal K.R. King here, helping you homebrew your own world and its stories. And today's topic is the ghost ship trope, one made famous by the true life story of the Mary Celeste. Now, the two most logical explanations offered for the disappearance of the crew of the Mary Celeste were piracy and the nature of its cargo. It was denatured alcohol, uh, which was notorious in those days for blowing up uh, when in the cargo hold of a ship. There was a rope dangling from the stern of the Mary Celeste, so the theory was the crew were worried that this cargo was going to explode, and they put themselves in a lifeboat uh, behind with this rope, and then the rope broke or came loose, and uh, off they went, and they all died. But, you know, both of these theories had just strong issues. If you had pirates, you know, there'd be some signs of a struggle. And why would the pirates leave all the crew's possessions behind? The other thing is the captain of the Mary Celeste was a very experienced seaman. And he would probably have realized, even if there was an explosion on board, even if the ship was sinking or whatever, it'd be much safer to use the ship on something to stay on board than being in a lifeboat in the middle of the Atlantic. And these two objections to the most reasonable theories led to all sorts of fanciful explanations. You know, natural phenomenon like a water spout or a giant squid attack that grabbed crew members one by one. Or, you know, the classic you know, alien abduction trope. And the thing is, I think that the fascination with the Mary Celeste is more than just the mystery of the crew's abduction. Because there is truly something haunting about an abandoned vessel or building, especially one you know, that is clearly still habitable, one that, you know, whoever was there left, you know, in mid-action as though somehow they're just going to return. You know, the sense that at one moment there were people in this vessel going about their business every day and then suddenly they are gone and they leave all evidence of that past activity frozen in time. You know, think about the parent who's lost a child and they leave their room exactly as it was on that day that they disappeared, as though perhaps they will show up. In other words, very creepy. And these are the reasons why the ghost ship is such a great starting point for a storyline and adventure in D&D. The players come across the ghost ship. It's clearly been abandoned. They don't know why, and they want to solve the mystery. What happened to the crew? And the beauty of having this mystery in the world of D&D is that you can use mundane or conventional explanations, but you can also easily adapt it for fantastic explanations. So let's think about going step by step of creating a storyline encounter using a ghost ship. The first thing you have to do is decide, you know, what type of ship is this? So I'm going to go with a merchant ship, partly just because that's the original story of the Mary Celeste, but you could certainly use a warship if you like. I'm also going with a single-masted cog ship because that fits with the historical period of my D&D campaign. I've seen people use a Karak style ship uh, in D&D. Uh, that's the classic, you know, like the Santa Maria reproduction we see here of Columbus's uh, voyage. Uh, but really that's a little bit later historical period than we typically run in a D&D campaign. Now, if you do have a cog ship, 
Uh, you can easily convert it into a military ship. You just add a fore and after castle on bow and stern. Uh, to attack other ships, you leave some military implements around. Again, everything's been abandoned, so just instantaneous. So you're going to use more of the fantastical. You may have, you know, meals still sitting there. Uh, you may have uh, things clearly just almost frozen in place. You know, the nice thing about having a merchant ship is the cargo might be on board. It might be valuable. But a warship, you know, it might have weapons around if you're in a world where there are uh, magic weapons. If someone left, you know, a plus one trident on the deck, why? What, what would have caused them to just, just abandon the ship or disappear? And this leads us to the big issue with the ghost ship. What happened to the crew? Uh, and what are any, if any, clues that are left behind that the players can use to figure this out? Now, if you want to go with the classic Mary Celeste disappearance and you stick with the facts and maybe add some of the fantastical descriptions that I mentioned. No sign of a struggle. Everything left in its place. The cargo is intact. All the possessions of the crew are there. Uh, and then if you want those fanciful things. But you don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to have pirates, you know, took the abducted or, you know, threw the, killed the crew and threw them all overboard, you can do that. But the clues are going to be probably a signs of a struggle. Certainly the crew's possessions aren't going to be there. And one of the things you could do with the old pirates is maybe they threw everybody on board, but they tied one person to the mast or up in the crow's nest. Maybe that person is barely alive and they can give the players, you know, the dying clues, some cryptic messages. Or the child that's hiding, you know, below decks, maybe it hid or its parent hid them in a barrel or something. Uh, and the child also can give clues as to what happened. The thing about pirates is you may have a very colorful pirate, you know, think of uh, Blackbeard or... You know, the fictional Long John Silver, very flamboyant. The kid gives this image of him, and now the players can go and investigate, see where this figure has been seen or whatever, because clearly they killed all these people. Uh, they need to be brought to justice. And if you have natural phenomena like water spouts or sea quakes, then the crew is just dead. They floated down, and the answer, even if you somehow get it, uh, it doesn't quite have the, you know, fun of some fantastical explanation. And it doesn't have the fun, the pirate thing or the conventional one because it doesn't have that mystery or magic. And it doesn't have that they just disappeared. Everything looks just as before they left. it. Because for the true total mystery, it has to happen so quickly that no one, the captain or first mate, had time to write anything down in the logbook. Unless you go for the crew disappearing one by one over time and then it's written in the logbook. So the classic example of this is Bram Stoker's Dracula. You know, Count Dracula leaves the Baltic and sails to England. And, and during the course, he's feasting on the crew members of the ship, throwing them overboard. And famously, the ship comes into the harbor with the dead captain tied to the wheel. And what do you know? Here's our first fantastical reason for the ghost ship, the vampire story. You know, you could say this is a little bit on the nose or redundant. We've seen the vampire thing before, but perhaps it's a tribute to the vampire legendarium. You know, the players find the ship with the guy tied, and if, maybe if they can remember this, they'll make the connection, and now they're hunting for this vampire. But you know, it doesn't have to be one. Let's say a succubi gets on the ship disguised just as a traveler, and over the course of the journey, she seduces, you know, crew members, kills them, tosses them overboard until only the captain is left. You know, she seduces him to make him her slave, to sail, whatever, and then throws him over. Maybe she pretends to be, you know, this damsel in distress. She's down below decks hiding. Or she just goes ethereal and waits for the next crew. But let's say that you want to mirror the total disappearance of the true life Mary Celeste. Well, there are magical means that this could happen or creatures that could do this. Suppose the ship pass through some kind of planar crease or something in which only organic material is transported, hence all the crew members. And of course, what would the clues be here? Well, if their clothes were all lying on the deck exactly where they were, the players have some idea. But again, how do they trace this? Maybe in the logbook we're entering a strange lights ahead, you know, just before this, the last entry or something like that. And there could be a geographical thing when they make this observance of these strange lights, right? Uh, some shoals that they went by, or some uninhabited island. Because, of course, maybe the island wasn't always uninhabited. Maybe the players go here to where this crease was. Uh, they see this island, and they see the ruins of at one time there was a tower. Then there's a dungeon. This leads to the gateway to the plane. 
Or maybe if the players retrace the steps to this and they see this light, if they pass through, they're going to be transported themselves. Now you could have, you know, undersea creatures, you know, Sogan climb up on the ship, take the uh, crew and leave without taking any booty, let's say. Uh, the problem here is if they're super deep underwater or they don't do the same with the players, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to find them. Same thing if, you know, something flies overhead, a whole, you know, flock of some creatures and they, you know, grab the crew and fly off with them, you know, unless there's clues as to where it happened and the players return there and this is like their feeding ground, uh, it's going to be hard to discover what happened to the crew who've probably been eaten uh, and to, you know, uh, exact any retribution. For the mysterious, you know, disappearance of the crew, to really have a storyline to it, there has to be a way to either free the crew if they've been taken to another dimension or being held prisoner or something, or to neutralize the force such that it can't continue to do this. So if you have an island of harpies that maybe you've homebrewed a little bit and made a little more powerful, and they're, you know, singing their song, it's really hard to resist for ordinary sailors, uh, and it's taking them and leaving ghost ships, uh, again, although harpies maybe want to collect the booty, but let's just say they just leave it. Uh, maybe there's like a sea hag kind of situation, a coven here on an island, this sort of thing. Something magical that would want these uh, characters and for whatever reason don't want to take the stuff on the ship. Or if you're going to be homebrewing some entity that feeds on organic matter, again, uh, maybe this island with a tower and some planar thing and it's uh, whoever uh, had this thing left this this entity has come out of this thing and it's sucking out you know human lives. But you know here's another idea. What if you had a ghost ship that is really a ghost ship? You can use some natural phenomenon that killed all of the crew members you know right mid activity you know or some extra planar incident or whatever uh, that instead of just transporting organic matter uh, just kills it or it drove them insane. Uh, this could be, as I said, the planer thing. This could be a disease that's very fast acting. One of the crew members picked up or something, drives them insane, and they run amok, and they jump overboard. Or if you want to mirror the Mary Celeste, some of the crew runs amok, and the rest get into the lifeboat to try to get away, and of course the rope comes loose, off they go to die, and the other crew members jump overboard. In any of these cases, the ship looks deserted at first, but then it becomes clear that it's haunted. You know, maybe only at night they appear, or... You know, you could use the Pirates of the Caribbean trope on a full moon. You know, and the fun thing about ghosts is, you know, they might not know they're dead, or they might have to, you know, uh, pay back some crime that they've committed in order to be released from their ghost status. You know, I did a video quite a while back on a independent supplement, Volo's Guide to Ghosts. It gave all sorts of great ideas about how to use ghosts, different types of ghosts, different powers. You know, ghosts can be really interesting because of, you know, the, the legendarium, as it were, that we have of ghosts in our culture. And, you know, the haunting of a ghost ship like this can be subtle. If the players uh, come along this, maybe they become the crew of this ship or they enlist some, uh, the crew of the ship they were traveling on and they're sailing this back with the, you know, the uh, cargo still on board or whatever, and slowly but surely things begin to happen. Maybe players are attacked at night or crew members begin to disappear. Something like that where the haunting is very gradual. And another thing about a ghost ship like this, let's say there are no ghosts, but the disease or the effect is still haunting the ship, and slowly but surely it begins to affect, you know, the crew or the players. So here you don't have to necessarily figure it out, they just jumped overboard, but now the effect is traveling with the ghost ship. Now, the final consideration with a ghost ship is, you know, where and how do the players find it? The example of the Mary Celeste, it's in mid-ocean, so here the players would have to be presumably traveling by ship. Maybe if there's like an airship or they have some flying raft or carpet, but typically they're going to be in a ship. But, you know, you could have a ship ground somewhere and the players are traveling along the coast and they see this ghost ship grounded and abandoned. Uh, it could be just offshore somewhere, again abandoned, you know, obviously just moving in the waves. Uh, here you're going to have to have the lifeboats all there because if a lifeboat is missing with the real Mary Celeste, the players are going to go, oh, they must have gotten out, come to shore, and now they're going to come back, you know, with a salvage crew. So typically a grounded ship will have come from somewhere else. The players don't have to be at sea necessarily to find it, so they come. And maybe, as I said, there are clues if uh, either they disappeared over time. Uh, there's some evidence of something, let's say, uh, 
uh, you know, markings or something where they can trace this back to where it happened, the old logbook entry. Or with no clues, a la uh, Mary Celeste, wherever the players find it, they're going to have to use divination magic of some kind. Uh, maybe they look at this ship, how long has it been here? Maybe they get a history of where this ship was, uh, this sort of thing, if it's been in the past. What you want to do is make sure with divination, uh, with the appearance of this ship, even the logbook, if it doesn't say anything uh, about what happened, that the players can get some clues to figure out who this crew was, you know, where they were going, what, what this was all about. So there's some ideas on using the story of the Mary Celeste, the most famous ghost ship of all time, in your D&D campaign. So if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for more. Please leave some comments. My faithful viewers know that I love to read them. But most importantly, keep playing the greatest game ever invented, Dungeons & Dragons, and tell somebody else about it.